Hey, what's up YouTube? I'm back with another video on Arch Survival Evolved, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can outplay your opponents and win more engagements in PvP. If you enjoy or like the video at any point, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps me out a lot. We're almost at a thousand subs, and I'm trying to get there before the end of the month. The link to all my socials will be in the description down below, but for now, let's get right into the video. So you gotta ask yourself, how can you outplay your opponent? And the best way is to identify how someone is going to move or react to what you're doing and then using that info to your advantage so you can do stuff like this. One thing I wanted to talk about with this clip was my positioning. Now look how I'm always keeping the C4 trap in between me and the opponent, forcing them to have to come towards me and fly over it. Another thing is the positioning of the C4. So I knew I was going to be going against flyers, so I didn't put it on the ground. I put it on top of a pillar that I knew I could bait people in the air to fly over. I do something similar right here. I was waiting for one of those guys in the bubble to either pop a gig and try to push me or something when I seen a guy shoot a net from behind. So I took him over to where my C4 trap is and the reason why I put it on the foundation is because there's not very many around. It's very easy to tell where it's at and so that way if I kite someone over to it I know when to blow it up. This time the guy had used it for cover and as soon as he ran up to it I blew it up and it was a free kill. Alright, so in this clip, we're in the island ice cave, and I'm telling my friends to run in front of the crouch point, so that way they can bait people to try to grapple them. The thing about the island crouch point is if you stand up, no matter if people grapple you, you won't be able to get pulled through. Now, they have a bloodstalker on the other side, and I told my friend to get picked by it, so that way it would put him on a 20 second debuff, and he'd be able to net the stalker. While that was happening, I ended up seeing someone that I could reel in, so while I was pulling him in, he was also standing up on the other side. Now, the best way to counter that is to bolo them while they're being pulled through the crouch. Whenever you get bullied, it forces you to crouch or go prone. I don't know why, but it pulls people through the crouch point super easy every single time. If you have things on your side like mantises and theories, when you pull people through, you can either cage them or get an instant kill because as soon as they get bullied and they get pulled through, they're going to have to run back towards the crouch point and by that point, you will already have a team blocking it or running from that direction. In this clip, I wanted to show the importance of using whips even in 2022, especially with things like cutters being very important to the game. So basically what I'm doing right now is I'm either trying to let the Bloodstalker reel me in or net it so that way my friend could pop a gig behind me, but I didn't want him cutting out. So as soon as I netted it, I ran up and I started whipping his cutter out his hand. Now he is unable to hop on his Bloodstalker because it's still netted and we ended up getting the kill on the, on the guy that was on the Bloodstalker. Now it's just this Wyvern guy, I end up netting him and now I know the exact same thing is going to happen. He's going to pull out his cutter to try to cut his Wyvern free and if I whip it out, he's stuck. Now he's on foot, there's nothing he can do but run away and the Wyvern is dead. For this clip I wanted to show the importance of working together in PvP. And I see my friend getting trank arrowed, so I stood in front of him so that way I could block any projectiles that came at him. And as soon as I did, he was able to cut out without getting hit. Something similar happens right here. I'm in a tech suit fight with these two guys, and my friend ends up getting netted. Now, I know they're going to aim for his boots, so I stood in front of him and I blocked as much as I could with my shield. Because the angle that they would shoot would most likely hit my shield while they're aiming for his boots This is very situational though I wouldn't recommend doing it if your health or your flak is low If there's one thing I can't express enough in this game is the importance of timing and knowing how long it takes for weapons to reload If you know how long it takes a weapon to reload you're able to pull out shields and stuff to block projectiles or ricochet oh God, it back so at them Yes, I did pull out the wrong oh, weapon and accidentally myself. netted myself But the main thing I wanted to go over was look at the timing I see him flying through the air, he's reloading his net gun, and then as soon as I see him done reloading, I put mine away and I pull out my shield. By doing that, it ricochets it back at him and it was perfect net. One thing I wanted to talk about was going over mindset in PvP. The best mindset to have is to go into a fight thinking you're going to win, but respecting the fact that your opponent can too. This is something that good players have an issue with, but great players have mastered. You never want to go into an engagement hoping you're going to win. But you need to be prepared if you don't. By doing this, you want to eliminate as many risks as possible. Now I know I'm low HP and he could probably kill me almost instantly with a flamethrower or with a tech rifle. So I'm hovering in the air, playing super high, so if he nets me, it gives me time to cut out. I notice he's trying to run back towards his shadow main, so I popped a Perlovia, just so that way if he came back towards me, it would hop out the ground and stun him. 
at this point he could still flame me or kill me so I decided to net him so that way if he does get unstunned he would have to cut out. By doing that I gave me the secure kill and I was able to tech rifle him and kill him without even taking a single damage. For this clip I wanted to show how crucial it is to be very coordinated when in PvP and how OP it can be. So basically we had already killed an Astro guy to avoid lightning and we seen this lightning guy. We knew he would be our biggest threat next so we ended up void lightning in that guy making sure we killed him. With that guy out of the way, now we knew there was just a Giga Rider left with the Shadow main, so we decided to go for the Giga so that way their last bit of DPS is gone. As soon as I stunned that and we lightninged him, we killed that guy. Now that their DPS is gone, we can safely go in and collect the kits. For this clip, I wanted to show how OP it is to run double net gun when in PvP. So right here, we void and lightning this guy off his tame. We kill him, and then I turn around to go LB the bag. I didn't want them grappling it or LBing it, so I bit the bag. Now I land on top of it, so that way I could hop off and grab it. But I see that this guy's just sitting here, so I net him. Immediately afterwards, instead of reloading my net gun, I switch to my other net gun. After I netted him, it makes it easy to tech rifle, and my friend helps me out a little bit. He ends up cutting out, now trying to hop and cut it shadow main free. So we flame him a little bit, and then as soon as we flame him and he hops on and jumps away, he dies from the fire damage. I do the same thing in this clip. I see a shadow main jumping up the hill, and I figured he was trying to get to this bag. So I LB'd it to see what was inside, and it was a full kit. Now that he's on the side of the hill, I netted his shadow main, switched to my other net gun, and netted his player. With this player netted, I was able to pull out my tech rifle and get some easy shots on him. A great way to outplay your opponents, especially if they're hiding in the water or in tech suits, is to use an AI lightning wyvern. You put it on aggressive and it'll AI lightning beam anything that is nearby. So whether it be PvE or players, and I'm over the water so I'm hoping that I could have it on follow and drag it over the top of the player. And then it would aggro the player. So... It ended up killing a dodo on the sand and then it seen the player so it started chasing it and while that guy is going through the water it zaps him and kills him. Another reason why this is so good is because if I were to try to lightning beam him while he was in the water and I were to hit the water I would get knocked off and I would instantly die. The lightning wyvern will full shove his head in the water to lightning beam whatever's under there. In this clip I use the AI lightning again and it killed some PVE and then as soon as it turned around to follow me it aggroed the player in the air. The guy tried to tech suit away, but AI lightnings basically have aimbot and they just zap people out the air perfectly. One thing I have been doing a lot lately is carrying gigas so that way when I net people I can pop it and the knockback from the gigabyte pushes them so far that they're not able to cut their tame free. And then as soon as that 10 seconds done, it's an easy one bite kill to kill them. So in this clip, I was jumping through the air trying to kill this wyvern. My mana isn't very good, so it's not doing very much damage, and I jump over to hide behind my turret. That way I could regen stam or do whatever I needed. And I notice that he's flying away and I don't want him to disengage, so I run over to hope he could pick me or something. And he ends up missing his first pick. Now I'm standing still so he can pick me again, and I know he's not pre-netted or anything, so I net him out the air and I instantly pop my gig. As soon as I pop it, I hop on and I start biting, and he lands on the gig, so he... He wasn't even able to cut his wyvern on the way down and as soon as I killed his wyvern I just chased him through the sand and killed him because he wasn't able to cut his tame free and he had no suit to jump away. I do the exact same thing right here. I was checking the spawns and I seen that there was a shadow main right there so I land to get full stand before I try to engage but he sees me too. So he goes in and he stuns me. I instantly pull out my net gun, run over and I net him and pop my gig. As soon as I pop my gig and start biting, he tries to cut, but it just pushes him back. At that point, he knew it was over and he tries to run away, but I just chased him down and it took me a sec to catch up to him, but as soon as I did, I ended up killing him and getting his kit. Right here, I had a whistled attack target on the Giga so that way mine would run after him, and I stood off to the side so that way I could stun him off and kill the Rider. The Rider ended up hopping off and running away anyways. So I stood in the middle so that way his Giga would bite mine and it would take the shadow main damage. One of my friends was trying to wait grapple the Giga but the Spino was chasing after him so I stood in front of it so that way I could block him and tank the damage. As soon as my stun debuff was done and I was able to stun the Spino I called it out so that way the lightning could come in and kill him and I knew that there was just a mana left after that guy died so I whistled attack target on the Spino and that was basically it. They ran after that.
In this clip I wanted to show the importance of using the right tools when in PvP. So I know we're going to be in the water or he's at least going to try to jump in the water to get rid of the flame damage so I know I can't use my shield in there. I turn on my shoulder cannon so that way when I'm underwater I could still have that extra bit of DPS. The shield is going to do me no good in the water so I switched it to my shoulder cannon instead and it's still shooting him with aimbot. While I was in the water, I just pulled out my tech rifle and started shooting him until he died. The reason why I wanted to show this clip was because it shows why I like Bloods and Tropicals so much. They have the ability to auto collect kits, so if you pre net and you kill someone in turret range, it collects the kit and you don't even have to go up and LB it. So right here I breath attack this guy once and I fly up so that way I could block the turrets from hitting my player. And I hit him again, fly up again, so that way I could block all the bullets. And each time I'm trying to breath attack him, he's also netting my wyvern. But because I had pre-netted, I was able to auto-collect the kit and fly away. That is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed or learned something new. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. We're almost at 1,000 subs. I'm hoping I can get there by the end of the month. But for now, see ya. You guys have a good one.